So without a whole lot of preparation or formality, I just thought I'd share some of what I've been feeling about these times that we're all living in. For starters, yes, it's obvious that the world we had, you know, several months ago no longer exists. We're in new territory now, unlike anything we've ever experienced. So these are, in fact, very challenging times, but also great opportunistic times. And I think most of us, most of the people like yourself watching this, this particular video, would have that belief that we recognize that, yes, there's lots of suffering, there's lots of change, lots of challenges that are taking place from the pandemic to exacerbated social unrest, economic uncertainty, uh, political you know, polarization, so many different things all happening at the same time. But deep down inside in our hearts, we recognize something bigger is going on. We're in a transformational phase in our world, where a new world is actually birthing itself right now, right in the midst of the old world. And the tension between the old world and the new world is often what we see and what we experience. Now, with that belief, there comes responsibility. For me, I have to be cognizant of what I am doing right now to help usher in this new world right in the midst of the challenges. What is it that I'm doing that can help to make this easier, a kinder and a gentler process to bring in this new world that we all sense is happening to you these extraordinary times that we're living in right now. And that starts with a moment to moment, day to day attitudes, perspectives, and actions. You know, what attitudes are we holding when we see the news? When we see how many challenging situations that there are and we see increases in the coronavirus cases, for example. And we see people that don't necessarily seem to be acting proactively to reduce the effect of the coronavirus. What's our inner attitude in those moments? Do we have compassionate latitude for the entire situation? Or do we get identified and feel a sense of despair, a sense of hopelessness? Do we sometimes get irritated or angry about the way things are being handled? Do we foster judgments? about what others are doing or others are not doing? Or do we go back to that place where we hold a higher version of ourselves, our higher dignity and our honor, and we begin to model what we hope these changes will eventually lead us to, which to me is a more heart-connected world, a world that operates more harmoniously based on the principles and values and qualities long associated with what we call heart. My life's work has been an exploration of heart for many, many years now. And the work here at HeartMath is to provide a system, tools, techniques, and methods in technology, all underpinned with scientific research, to reconnect people with something they already have inside, which is this beautiful, magnificent, high-speed intuitive intelligence that we call heart. And what I've learned about heart all these years is that it's not soft, it's not mushy, it's not sentimental. It's a powerful intelligence, an essential intelligence that we all need to guide our choices through the, this game of life. And never before has that been as important as it is right now here today. So the connection to our heart's intelligence is part of what I think is happening in this shift that we are experiencing and the new things that we're beginning to discover. The planetary ego has been put on pause for a while. Many people are having to reflect. Many people are going through a lot of things that are pushing them uh, to make different choices, to consider approaching life a lot differently than they were before. And some of the same principles and values that we used to guide our life before all this began don't necessarily work as well anymore. It's an uncomfortable feeling, but it's also a sign of growth, that we are moving, that we are changing, that things are, are, are headed in the right direction. So I feel that the most important thing that I can do and that I suggest to any of you that are watching right now is that one of the most highly facilitated services that we can participate in is to simply put out more love. Put more love into the energetic field environment of consciousness. To bring in more of our true higher self, our spirit, merge that with our humanness and gently and casually broadcast a feeling of love. That can sound idealistic, it can sound like spiritual fantasy. That's really gonna help. But my belief is that it does and it helps more than we can even realize. So moment to moment, day to day, I'm always asking myself, you know, 
What am I feeding the energetic field environment of the planet? And am I radiating love consciously into that field? Am I doing it uh, while I'm in activity? Am I doing it preceding activities? Am I doing it in between activities? So I try to stay conscious, as conscious as I can, while allowing for the ups and downs of life to be broadcasting or radiating love as much as possible. And to me, that's um, important. It helps me maintain my balance, my poise, my stability, my connection with my deeper real self. And I do think it's, it's an, an act of service that's essential right now for all of us to help usher in, as I said earlier, this new and better world that will in fact emerge at some point as we go through these challenging times. Now, each month here at RMAT, we put out what's called a care focus. And so uh, you can find that on the heartmath.org website. We have two sites, heartmath.com and .org. On the .org site, under the Global Coherence Initiative section, you can find this care focus. And it's, it's an audio, and it's also written. A care focus is designed to bring people together, and it does, from all around the world, to use our heart focus, care, and our intention to have a positive benefit on whatever situation seems to be um, confronting global society at any given time. We just came out with one very recently, and what I'm going to do now is something I don't normally do. I'm going to read instead of talk. What I'd like to invite us all to do right now is a little heart meditation. And if you'd like to close your eyes, you can please do that. We'll take about five minutes to do this. So close your eyes if, you, if you'd like, and I will take us through this. So take a minute or two to breathe in the feeling of genuine appreciation for someone or something you care about. This helps to activate heart feelings, which increases the effectiveness of the care focus intention. And just feel your heart connecting with others across the planet who are sending love and care to help reduce the collective stress and raise the heart vibration of humanity. radiating love and care, see people increasingly treating each other with more compassion, kindness, and cooperation, and taking safety precautions for themselves and others. Now let's send sincere appreciation, love, and compassion to the frontline workers, the caregivers, all those helping others through this pandemic. Also, send compassionate care and heart warmth to the thousands of people who have lost loved ones through these times.
Let's close by sending our compassionate care to people suffering from the pandemic and many other societal and global challenges. Ask your heart to direct some of the energy from that care to any of the challenges or issues that you care about that are close to your heart. Okay, thank you very much for your participation in that care focus and for your care. As I said earlier, I think that the way in which we are handling the various situations in our lives today is modeling what we want to see in the future for global humanity. I take that seriously in a, a fun, adventurous way uh, to be changing, changing myself, finding new ways to improve new ways to refine who I am and how I operate in this world and to model that behavior as best I can through radiations of love, care, kindness, and compassion to people and interactions, any situation that I'm really in. You can go to heartmaths.org website and find the care focus there if you'd like to do that again. You can go to the heartmath.com website, click on the, the tab for a heart math experience. It's a, a beautiful learning experience. It, it feels like you're watching a film, but you're learning heart math tools and techniques. You're learning heart math science. You're learning about personal and social and global coherence. And it's divided into chapters. The whole thing's about 90 minutes long. And during these times when we've been experiencing all these changes, we at Heart Math decided to let people have it for free. And there have been hundreds of thousands of people all around the world who taken advantage of that, who've gotten an access code and who've been watching the heart math experience. It's just a gesture on our part to uh, do something that we felt would give people not just an, uh, more information, but an uplift in spirit, tools and techniques that they can carry forward into their, their daily lives and interactions and uh, to apply them to uh, moving through these times with more poise and, and more grace and the ability to serve others in, in new and in more um, effective ways. So I hope um, you've enjoyed my little impromptu talk today. Uh, thanks again for everyone who invited me to be here for this wonderful organization that's doing all of this. Uh, I sincerely wish you all the very, very best in everything that you're doing in your life. Let's stay together, let's stay connected. Uh, we are one, we are connected. Everything is connected, every living system on this planet. Always recognize that and remember that. And remember that you're never alone. 